everybody east coast be here today we're gonna look at exodus exodus they're an early american thrash band from 1979 from richmond california and they are considered pioneers of the bay area thrash metal scene one of the big eight with Metallica, Megadeth, Slayer, Anthrax, Testament, Overkill, and Death Angel. The career was at its apex in the 80s, in the middle of the 80s actually, with three albums, Bonded by Blood, Pleasures of the Flesh, and Fabulous Disaster. Capitol Records became their label in 1989. There were two more studio albums before the exodus of Exodus because of grunge Odus. Capitol didn't see Nirvana coming. Exodus would regenerate in 1997 and again in 2001 and since then they have released five more studio albums that were not particularly revelatory the initial lineup was Kirk Hammett and Tim Agnello on guitars drummer slash vocalist Tom Hunting and vocalist Keith Stewart like we've got a heavy metal thrash band that has a drummer who sings while he's playing. Is that, is that what they're doing? I can't tell. Can you? Can you tell if the drummer's singing? I'm always looking for drummers that sing because I know it's really hard to play drums and sing. You try it. Bassist Carlton Melson joined in 1980 and they were Fresh out of high school, playing backyard parties during the 70s, They're doing hard rock covers. We're also influenced by the NWOBHM, which was the new wave of Brit heavy metal. Only a handful of the approximate 1,000 new bands survived Iron Maiden, Def Leppard. Motorhead, Saxon, Diamond Head, Venom, and Raven would remain underground but would go on to influence extreme metal subgenres throughout Europe in the 90s. The NWOBHM Nwobum was an underground phenomenon that grew parallel to the punk movement in the 70s. Young white males who suffered from the economic hardships and unemployment following the 73 to 75 recession. And as punk rebelled, metal simmered as fans looked for what they saw as a reasonable form of rock, not connected to punk and glam fashions it was working class heavy metal no clothes pins no fright wigs no spikes common man heavy music different than the top heavy bands of the previous decade but not a big enough wave to compare with MTV and grunge in the 90s, subjugating many bands to low sales and no charts and eventual submersion. If they made it to the turn of the century, they had a chance to be a part of the resurgence of the last 20 years. Most didn't on both sides of the pond. 
Exodus suffered the same fate, but in the 80s they toured with Exeter, I think that might be Exciter, Megadeth, Anthrax, King Diamond, Possessed, DRI, Nuclear Assault, and Hyrax. Exodus was by then less thrash, more slow, heavy, slow became stop in 1992. But then, in 2002, Paul Bailoff died from a stroke. And Gary Holt was determined to continue. Gary Holt filled in for Slayer guitarist Jeff Hanneman, who contracted necrotizing facetus. Facetus? Sounds like his face was dying. He got it from a spider bite. Rick Hunnold joined Exodus to replace Holt. And when Hanneman died, Holt stayed with Slayer. But he would also stay with Exodus. Why not? One, Bonded by Blood in 85. It's really got silly sleeve art, you know, kind of like a Gemini thing with two young children attached at the spine. It's really a rock album, but it's got a good sound. Second album, Pleasures of the Flesh, was more thrashy when in 87. Got Till Death Do Us Part. It's got really great drums. If you're a drummer like me, you'll appreciate that. Three, Fabulous Disaster in 89. Four, Impact is Imminent in 90. Yeah, truer words are not spoken. Five, Force of Habit in 92. So it's like, I guess they kept the band going out of Force of Habit. <laughs> it's like, they didn't know what else to do. Six, Temple of the Damned in 04. Seven, shovel headed kill machine in 05. That sounds like a biker album. And Harleys are called shovel heads. Eight, the atrocity exhibition exhibit in 07. And eight, exhibit B, the human condition in 2010. And ten, blood in, blood out. Got bad sleeve art. But again, a good sound. The band is currently working on a new release slated sometime in 2020. And that's it I got on Exodus. I was wondering if since I've been doing so many of these wonderful metal bands that maybe I should show some love to the other segment of our population who like metal but they don't like all the death and gloom and demonology of course I'm talking about Christian metal so get ready buckle your seatbelts we're going on a ride